One thing that me and a lot of other tech channels keep bringing up is how impressively small Navi is. You've got a chip that's maybe, you know, like a little bit bigger than what Polaris was, but unlike Polaris, it doesn't just compete with the uh, GTX 60 series. It's able to compete all the way up to the 104 dies, which is not always been the case. In fact, it's usually not the case. And that's why I say that NVIDIA is worried about our DNA. And they really should be worried considering how much more room AMD has to grow to a much, much, much larger chip. But I keep seeing this weird fallacy popping up. And that's why I'm making this video. It's time to tackle stupid comments like this. It's honestly becoming spam at this point. If I go into any recent video where I mention die size with Navi and NVIDIA, even for just a second, and then I search in the comments, Tensor, this is what popped up. These were the top comments that just popped up right away. I didn't cherry pick these. And it's just tons of people saying that I shouldn't have included Tensor cores in the equation for the die space, or that NVIDIA can just easily remove these with no care in the world, and then AMD screwed. And the fact is, this just simply isn't true, and this spam needs to stop. There is some major misconceptions going on about how Turing works, and the advantages there would or wouldn't be by removing these cores. When AMD shrunk Vega from 14 nanometer to 7 nanometer, they got about a 33% die size reduction. And that's for good reason. Yes, theoretically, you can shrink it to by like 80 or even 100% if you really want to. But to do that, with how close the transistors will be and with how closely we're approaching theoretical limits of silicon, you'll get a clock speed regression, a, actually a quite a large one if you really got towards that theoretical limit. So there, that's the reason it was a 33% reduction. And thus in an apples to apples comparison, a die shrink of Turing would also probably be around 33%. So what am I saying? Navi, a 255 millimeter squared, seven nanometer die is competing with a 545 millimeter squared TU 104 die. Yes, I understand that at least for now, the 2080 Super is going to crush um, Navi 10, at least by, I'd say, 20, 30%. But, you know, it's still not strong enough to consider it out of the same ballpark. And certainly the cut down 2070 Super was released for good reason because NVIDIA knew they had to have that out while, ter while Navi ages and keeps gaining a little bit performance out of over time. And so if we were to die shrink Turing though, if we were really to die shrink it from 545 and then compare it to Navi, you're actually looking at a die that's still 43% larger. 43. TU-104 apples to apples on 7 nanometer from TSMC would still be 43% larger than what you have on Navi 10. And that's a larger die size um, you know, gap than the performance gap. The 2080 Super is not going to be 43% stronger than the 5700 XT, especially not than the AIB models. So if we all accept that the die difference is impressive, we then need to, as I've talked about with those comments I showed you, directly tackle a couple of points as to why it isn't so simple to remove the tensor and RT cores. And point number one is just getting across the realistic expectations of what NVIDIA would gain by removing the RT and Tensor cores. And this was something I covered all the way back in February, you guys. So I don't blame you if you didn't see this. I mean, this is when I only had a few hundred subscribers. But I did cover this. I extrapolated what a full 1600-based lineup would look like. You know, a lineup based with the mindset of no RT no Tensor, just gaming like the 1660 Ti. And I compared the 1660 Ti to the 2060 to get these numbers. And my estimation, and it's not exact science, but it, I'm pretty confident it's close, is that you would have gotten like a 10 or 20% ROP increase, a 5 to 10% CUDA core increase, and a 20% reduction in power usage, equivalently, by not bothering with all these useless features. Now, I said back then that I actually thought that was overall a big deal. 
Think about it. You have cards that are going to perform 10 to 15% better while using 10 to 20% less energy. That doesn't sound that big, but if you add it up, that's like a 30 to 40% overall performance per watt increase and a nice performance increase. That'd be like a 2080 uh, perform using almost as little energy as a 2070 and then also performing almost as well as a 2080. It would it wouldn't quite get you a tier's difference, but it would get you most of the top of a tier increase in performance and most of a tier reduction in power usage. I thought that would have been great. But it's not like it cuts the die size in half, people. The, really, these RT and Tensor cores are only taking up like 15 to 25% of the die, roughly, is what I came to the conclusion of. That, that's it. They're not taking up half of it. You're not going to get double the CUDA cores by removing Tensor and RT. And the efficiency gain, well, nice, is not like some doubling. You guys got to take into account realistic um, assessments of the die. It's not that much of the space if you look at actual die shots and i mean let's just look at how big this is without rt or tensors the tu 116 die you know the 1660 ti is a 284 millimeter squared die it uses about 100 to 120 watts these cards so yeah this is your this would be normally called like a 2050 ti or something if nvidia wasn't pulling shenanigans and this 2050 ti class card it has about the same die size as the GTX 680. <laughs> Guys, that is how Turing works. Regardless, regardless of if it has Tensor and RT cores, it trades die space for efficiency. Even if you remove the RT cores and the Tensor cores, you're still going to have dies that are at least 50 to 80, 100% bigger than the equivalent Navi die. That's just how Turing works. And so the summary of point one really is that while there would be benefits for pure gaming tasks by removing the RT and Tensor cores, this wouldn't be some silver bullet that cuts the die size in half or doubles efficiency or anything like that. The point is, the 2080, even on 7 nanometer, even with the RT and Tensor cores removed, would still be like a 20 to 30% bigger die than Navi 10. It just would be. And actually, this is when we need to start bridging into point number two. I also covered a while ago that I just don't think there is any chance NVIDIA is bringing out non-RTX cards that make the 2080 and 2080 Ti look stupid. I covered this in a video where I was totally open to the idea that they might make one larger, like I guess they might call it like a TU114 die, something that just almost or maybe barely trades blows with the 2080, and they might call this the GTX 1680 and then cut it down and make a 1670. I could have seen them doing something like that, but I don't think there's any chance they would humiliate the 2080 Ti, at least not for over a year, because it would just look absolutely stupid and make so many people get pissed off, which actually perfectly brings me to point number two. So yeah, theoretically, NVIDIA could remove RT and Tensor cores and get benefits for pure gaming use cases, but these benefits wouldn't be gigantic. And so num point number two is the fact that the gains wouldn't be absolutely astronomical is why it wouldn't be worth NVIDIA to do it. Because to do this, to remove the RT and Tensor cores after just one full lineup, the RTX 2000 series of using them, it would result into a catastrophic loss of mind share, and they would look so incredibly stupid. You guys saying this, why, oh, they'll just remove the RT and Tensor cores if they need to. Do you have any idea how dumb NVIDIA would look, not just to gamers, but to shareholders? They just talked up Tensor cores and RT cores, like they're the greatest things since sliced bread for a year, over a year straight. And they're using these on professional cards. Do you really think they want to just say, oh, we removed it, we were kidding? It, it, they would look so idiotic. So, so, 
so idiotic. And the people that bought these Turing cards, that bought into the hype, would feel so incredibly burned. And I know people make fun of NVIDIA fanboys like they're mindless and people who buy Turing are idiots. Well, that's not really true, guys. I might kid. They're not really all a bunch of idiots. They bought these for the features. Features NVIDIA said they would get. If they remove these, they will never buy NVIDIA for at least a while. This would be worse than getting a GTX like Titan and then watching the 7970 slowly beat it in performance at least it took three or four years like and at that point who cares that the 7970 overtook a one thousand dollar titan this would be so much worse like and so much quicker to just have all these features you bought into get abandoned and so that's point number two nvidia cannot even think of removing this stuff for a couple years, it would take a colossal defeat, like Big Navi coming out with not just 50% more performance, but like double the performance somehow of the RX 5700 XT, crushing them, keeping the performance crown for a year to the point that it scares NVIDIA shitless. And even then, they couldn't, they would still probably have to have one more lineup where they just tone down how often they talk about it, kind of like how they slowly phased out SLI. They didn't just remove SLI lie overnight they went from supporting four cards to supporting three cards to eventually just supporting two yeah two cards then just supporting two cards on half of their lineup until now where it's basically just a niche feature a few cards can support even a little that's what will happen to ray tracing and to things that utilize tensor and rt cores if nvidia is really forced to do it but that won't be till 2021 in other words what have I been talking about? All of this stuff. NVIDIA has made a roadmap. They've made a plan. They're stuck with Tensor and RT cores for the next few years. They wouldn't get massive benefits by removing them, and they would lose massive mindshare if they did. So they're not going away. So please, people, please stop making the arguments that NVIDIA can just flip the removal switch when they want to, because it's just not going to happen. Navi is an impressive architecture for taking up half the die space NVIDIA's equivalent cards take up, and that's going to continue to be the case. NVIDIA is going to continue to have to use gigantic dies to complete with RDNA, and that's how NVIDIA's always worked. This isn't new. Just look at the 290X versus Kepler. Just look at... I mean, certainly the 3000 through 6000 series, AMD versus Fermi, and the Tesla architecture from NVIDIA. NVIDIA does this. This is how they do it. They have these gigantic, expensive dies that compete with smaller AMD dies. This has always been the norm outside of a couple of blips that were, are really outliers if you've been in this industry for a long time. So yeah, hopefully we'll stop seeing yet another example of a ridiculous comment spam, the idea that they can just remove these cores. And if you were one of the people saying that, well, hopefully you learned something. And to be honest, I haven't seen almost anyone else talk about um, the actual amount of die space and reasons for keeping or removing NVIDIA has with Turing. No one's talking about that. People, in fact, I see a lot of websites spreading complete misinformation about how much space these Tensor and RT cores are taking up. It's just simply not true. Hopefully you all learned something and hopefully people stop disregarding RDNA's legitimately impressive features. One of those features is how efficient it is for performance per die size. And Turing has its own features as well that you can't write off. If you did learn something, please consider subscribing to my channel. I been putting out a lot of videos and a lot of you I know watch them but haven't subscribed yet. If you've watched a few, maybe subscribe. And of course, if you have subscribed, don't forget to ring the bell button. I'm not going to keep saying that every video, but I do have to now because according to YouTube, almost none of you have. And so you're probably missing half of the videos I've put out. And of course, like and share this if you did enjoy it and you did learn something. Please spread this information with other people. So I stop. We all stop seeing this you know, misinformation keep spreading. And of course, talk with me on discord if you support me on patreon that my patreon members are the ones making this channel possible all right thank you